So, uh, Michael Dukes, why don't you start out with an uh, uh, opening statement and kind of who you are and what you see down the road. Thanks, Dick. Uh, my name is Michael Dukes. I'm a uh, third generation Alaskan. Uh, my family, uh, all pretty much born and raised here. Um, I'm married to my wife, Terry. We've been married for 21 years. We have five children. Um, I work in the radio industry. I have my own radio show and I sell advertising for one of the local stations. Uh, and for the last year, I've been serving on the borough assembly. I was filling out a appointed seat that I was elected to last year and decided that uh, I had another, uh, another go around in me. I felt like there were still some things that needed to be done. And so uh, I wanted to take this chance to come out here and do it. And I appreciate the opportunity to come on KJMP. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Michael. And Van Lawrence. Thank you, Dick. Uh, I am Van Lawrence. Uh, I have, uh, I moved to Fairbanks uh, 33 years ago and I have owned and operated my law practice here for over 30 years. I raised my family here and um, you know I like it here. I like the people here. Uh, I'm running for borough assembly because uh, I've been frustrated by um, certain members of the assembly, including my opponent, uh, hand handcuffing the, the, the assembly and, and uh, by, by, by having the attitude that government, local government is not to be trusted and should do as little as possible. Uh, when, when people in charge have that attitude, government doesn't get anything done for the people. And uh, I think that that's a problem that needs to be corrected and that's why I'm running for borough assembly. Well, I'm in favor of Proposition 2 because I think it addresses a very serious problem for this community. Uh, PM 2.5 is both a, a serious health problem and, and, a, and a threat to our economic, vi you know, economic vitality. Uh, I think the, the, the proposition as, as it's written addresses the, the causes and, uh, uh, and I think it's important to remember that uh, this proposition uh, has the community dealing with this problem locally and if we don't handle this problem locally it will, uh, a solution will be imposed upon us either by the state or by the EPA. Okay, Michael Luke. This proposition is problematic for several reasons. First of all, it's premature. Uh, we're right now in the process of still completing our initial uh, wood stove change out program which was uh, a program that was put in place uh, just over a year ago that would help folks swap out their wood stoves to reduce the emissions in the PM 2.5 in the community. We have not finished the first series of conversions. Last year I requested that the legislature give the uh, borough five million dollars to continue that change out program. My justification for that was if the state's going to make us fulfill these mandates they should pay for it. They didn't give us five, they gave us three. We have three million untapped dollars that we just appropriated just this last week uh, to, uh, to then use for those wood stove change outs. So we haven't even been able to see if our first round of changes has had an opportunity to work. Second of all, there are some serious problems with the enforcement of this, uh, of this ordinance. Uh, you're talking about checking to see whether a gust of smoke 35 feet in the air when crossing a property line uh, exceeds a certain PM uh, standard. You have, uh, you have an opacity standard that it talks about indoor wood stoves uh, that you don't have any training, we'd have to create a whole level, uh, level of bureaucracy on top of that. Uh, we're not exactly sure how that would be. There's a lot of unintended cons uh, consequences with that. On top of that, this, this uh, proposition is really unfair because it treats every outdoor hydronic heater as if it is a blatant polluter. Uh, there are a lot of outdoor hydronic heaters that are EPA certified, that produce very few emissions, yet those hydronic heaters will be treated as if they are a polluter and uh, even if you've invested 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars in it, it would be illegal inside the attainment area, regardless of how clean or dirty your hydronic stove is. Uh, there are a few polluters out there, we understand that, but take those bad actors and make them responsible for their own actions and don't blame the whole borough for it. So I think it's premature and it's problematic. We should let the current system that we have, and as Mr. Blanchard said, the goodwill that we've garnered in training the community and talking about them and educating them on how to burn wood, that's what needs to go forward first. I would encourage everyone to vote no on Prop 2. Okay, Mr. Davies. Uh, Van Lawrence for CD. 
Well, I believe in, in general, in most cases, federal grants should be accepted. This is money that uh, are coming is coming from the taxpayers, including us. Uh, you know, if if for, if a specific grant doesn't doesn't fill a purpose that uh, that we need to fill, perhaps not. But in general, I would accept federal grants. Okay, Michael Dukes. I think that uh, there are specific uh, circumstances under which we can accept uh, some federal grants. Uh, I believe that one of the things that we should accept federal grants for is infrastructure and roads and things that we were promised at statehood that we still, in some areas, in some instances, have yet to receive. In other uh, avenues, I think that we need to closely examine the unintended consequences of some grants, whether there's hooks or requirements that may not be foreseen at this time that down the road could end up costing taxpayers a lot of money. Um, I know that, uh, that uh, a lot of folks have said, well, if we don't take the federal grant money, somebody else will. Well, the question is, you know, what are we doing to our children? When the federal government is borrowing 40 to 45 cents of every dollar that they're currently spending today, what is the leveraged cost of that money over the course of the next several decades? So I think it's very important that we take a look at that. Um, as far as infrastructure goes, I would take those grants. Every other grant would get a very close look before I would even consider it. Okay. And <laughs> well, I, um, you know, uh, I was a, uh, a f fellow Kwanian member and good friend of mine was George Birdsong, and uh, he was uh, instrumental. That mm -hmm. question just brings me, brings him to my mind. He was, he was instrumental in, in getting flowers planted, you know, in Fairbanks along Airport Way and, and along Cushman, and, um, you know, and, and we still have those those uh, flower beds and, and I think of George when I when I see those uh, I, I think as far as beautification is concerned I think you know the uh, uh, the downtown Fairbanks you know the, the division Fairbanks plan uh, had some good has some good ideas as far as developing the downtown and, and emphasizing uh, the strength of the Gina River and, and the beauty of the Gina River um, so I think I think I think we've got a blueprint. I think it just comes down to um, implementing the blueprint. Okay, Michael Dutz. Uh, I think it's ironic that we bring up the Birdsong volunteerism for uh, uh, for the uh, beautification of uh, Airport Way because that was started by an individual. Uh, they did a lot of great work. He and and a lot of his friends and helpers put that together. That's since been taken over by the government and. Uh, and we now pay for that, I guess, through tax dollars when volunteerism was working in the past. Uh, I think a prime example of how individuals can make a difference is in the downtown core area. Uh, several business owners got together and they pooled their resources and pulled together with the downtown association and they were able to beautify that area. And I heard several times this year from folks who were visiting and talking to people downtown on the street, how beautiful the downtown area is with the baskets and the flowers and all these things that really make it a pleasure to be downtown. And that was through individual efforts. It wasn't through a government mandate. It was done by the individuals, folks who basically were able to figure it out on their own and decided to help and improve their own areas. And I think that's where we need to look. We need to look to ourselves and find how can we make our, our community a better place to look and invest in ourselves. John Davies. You know, it's pretty limited on the borough assembly, the things that we can directly affect uh, when it comes to getting natural gas and there was some discussion of trucking and importation and monies that could be spent. But the bottom line is, is that what we can basically do is we can liaise with the state uh, for different companies or communities like GBEA, for example, or Flint Hills and help smooth the way if there's any regu regulatory hurdles or things like that to help encourage and to take Fairbanks' will to the uh, uh, to the interior delegation and help that move forward. Uh, we have some, obviously, powers under economic development. Uh, we can do some things. We are, at this time, uh, talking about looking at the uh, uh, developing a plan for the distribution of that gas. I mean, once it gets down here to Fairbanks, to the storage facility, you have to get a, find a way for it to get to your house. And so that's one of the things that government can do. I mean, government is good at a couple things, and one of it is is doing something that we as individuals could never afford to do ourselves. Uh, and that is part, again, of infrastructure, and I think that's what that build-out would help with, uh, is having some kind of plan to make that happen. So we are working in those ways, but a direct application of bringing it to Fairbanks, uh, there's not a whole lot of things we can do other than what I said. Working with the state, working with local companies that want to do it, help liaise, help those things move forward. Okay, John Davies. Lawrence. 
Yeah, I recognize that uh, our dependency on high-priced oil is, is bleeding this economy dry, and that uh, our, our, our best solution, at least in the short term, is to uh, truck natural gas down from the North Slope. Uh, I hope that uh, the collaboration between, or the, the discussions and the collaboration between GBEA and Flint Hills will result in getting gas here quickly. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, and, uh, and I'm not so sure that uh, involvement by the Port Authority may not have made things go quicker. Uh, the, the borough will play a, a big role in, in getting the infrastructure uh, constructed to distribute the, the gas to the homes and businesses in this community, and that has to start now. Uh, if the gas, if we bring excess gas above the needs of GVA and Swin Hills down here, um, there's not much we can do with it except, you know, maybe sell it to Fairbanks Natural Gas uh, for their current customers. But uh, obviously, getting a, a distribution system constructed is important. It's going to be expensive, and it's going to take the borough to 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 lobby and and get funding, or at least get some funding out of the state to make this happen. The, the state's not going to give money to uh, private to the private sector. It's not how it works. So. Uh, you know, a, a, if I'm on the assembly, I, that would be my probably my top priority, is to uh, is to try to facilitate and get uh, get funding and get a distribution system uh, construct planned and constructed as fast as possible. I don't know that the EPA has not tested oil furnaces. I find it unlikely that they haven't. Uh, I suspect. I can only guess that uh, that, is that if we're talking about the uh, particle pollution, uh, that is that diesel fuel, I don't think, at least with regards to particle pollution, is, creates a big problem there. Uh, as, and, and for that reason, uh, as far as if you're talking about the exchange program, uh, I, I, you know, that exchange program is designed to address the PM 2.5 problem. And uh, I don't think the oil boilers are, are where that problem is coming from. Okay, Michael Luke. Um, I'll take a stab at this. I, I believe what the question is basically dictating to is the PM 2.5 problem. Uh, I have no answer as to why the EPA does not list that specifically. Uh, but if you do the reading and you do look at it, uh, the PM 2.5 problem is going to be addressed in the, uh, in the oil-fired furnaces soon. The EPA is already talking about specific ways that they may be able to do, including the mandatory, uh, the mandating of ultra-low sulfur diesel being used sometime in the future if, uh, if some attainment goals aren't met. And so there is a problem that's going to be uh, coming from this. I've often thought that the wood stove was the first step of moving into this because this is going to be a continuing problem, especially in the winter with the sulfide content of the PM 2.5 as shown by the DEC tracking from uh, 2008. Um, as far as why is it not included in the changeout, the changeout program was specifically targeted by the borough because the borough was primarily focused at this time on wood smoke and they're really not acknowledging much about the, uh, about the uh, discharge of PM 2.5 from uh, uh, oil-fired boilers at this point. I think that, again, I think that will be coming in the future. I do not know if they will be included in the changeout program, something that probably should be looked into. Okay, John Davies. Well, I think that uh well, I think at that point uh, the EPA will uh, enforce uh, remedies uh, on on Fairbanks that we're not going to like very much. I think they're going. I think they will um, uh, basically take a take a, uh, a, a saw at at what. Um, you know, what type of wood burning we can do. They may eliminate wood stoves uh, in a lot of the areas. Uh, you know, I, I can't anticipate exactly what they will do, but I think they will, EPA will fashion a remedy that will not meet uh, the specific needs of this community all that well. And that's why I want to see this problem taken, taken, uh, taken care of by, uh, by local government. Okay, hey, Michael Dukes. Uh, I think if you look at the past history of what these events have led to in other communities, is uh, that there is an ultimate deadline. 
uh, that that deadline probably will take, uh, that the solution to that deadline will probably take longer than the initial deadline, and usually there are some extensions to that. I don't think it will be the immediate axe blow uh, at uh, 2014. I think that there are probably a continued negotiation of changes and SIPs and things as we move forward. Um, ultimately, the big stick that the EPA uses, of course, is federal funding. Uh, they will start talking about dropping federal highway funds and some of these other things, which, uh, granted, it is a chunk of money, but uh, I don't think uh, it necessarily would be the sky is falling moment. It would give us more opportunity to continue to work on it, uh, and especially if it's highway funds, since we as a northern region receive a fraction of what's received in the rest of the state, maybe it would wake Anchorage up to our conundrum and help them, encourage them to, to help us get natural gas in the, in the interior. That, that, that would be my guess. I think one of the things that always needs to be looked at in government is what are we mandated to provide and how are we providing it? Um, when the borough started, there were three powers. Now since then, we've, we've uh, elected a lot more by the people, voted the people, the people wanted. We're up to 20, 21 powers right now. I think the first thing you could do is you could take and take the code and use it as a yardstick to look at the different services that are mandated and say, what are we mandated to provide? Are we providing it adequately? Are we doing it for a reasonable amount of money? Are we spending too much, or are we providing more than we're supposed to? Is there something that private industry or things, a gap that could be filled? Is there a need that could be filled by private business? Um, and, and I think those things could all be examined. Um, there's been discussions of privatization. We have some information coming up here and a study that we'd like to do on privatization of certain services. As long as that service can be delivered for the same quality at a lesser cost, then I think that's a good way to start taking a look at that and start cutting. Um, but those things all have to be examined. But that to me is where you start. You start holding up the idea of what are we supposed to provide? What are we mandated to provide? Are we providing it? And are we being as effective as we can be cost-wise? And I think that's the first place we start. Okay, Van Lawrence. Well, I have a, a, a degree and a background in economics. And, and, and economics in large part is, is allocating finite resources as efficiently as possible and so you know with that background I, I believe that the budget is probably maybe the most important function of the borough assembly and uh, you know I would certainly uh, take a take a magnifying glass to to what you know what is being spent how it's being spent you know one example and 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 it's not something I've really done a lot of research on is um, we've got um, we've got fire service or you know fire departments you know throughout the borough that I think there's a lot of redundancy uh, there are um, you know a fire chief for each of the fire service areas uh, you've got uh, equipment you've got you know two or three uh, fire trucks and a couple of ambulances for each of these each of these districts and and I think at some point and, and I know that these fire service districts were, were set up in, in with the thought of having volunteers carry a lot of the load and my understanding is that that's not happening that the borough is hiring to hire more and more more and more full-time firemen to man these stations so at, at some point I think you know we've got to look at the possibility of, of, of consolidating these fire districts and, and operating them more uh, you know more as as uh, as one unit rather than separate units You know, the, one of the biggest assets of this community is the uh, University of Alaska at Fairbanks and, and the scientists who are associated with the university. And I think that the, the question of, of, of air quality and, and, and what, uh, what processes are contributed to contributing to particle pollution uh, is, is a question for science. And, and I would, you know, would rely on science to give us those answers. Uh, anecdotally, uh, you know, I know I've, I've heard from several people that the, the power plant, uh, you know, down, you know, on the river, um, you know, that that residents nearby certainly have a lot of coal dust, you know, in their homes and, and, and outside on the snow. Okay, Michael, Dukes. This, uh, this issue is a state issue. The state it actually has the purview of checking these things. But at the same time, again, as a borough assembly member, we have responsibility to put forward uh, ideas or wants from those in the community. 
if there were something that showed, and I and, and if there is some anecdotal evidence that we do see some coal dust in the community uh, near and around some of these power plants, maybe that's something that the DEC should be looking into more closely as we continue to talk about these airshed issues in the PM 2.5. Uh, but definitely it's something that I would want the state to be able to take point on uh, because they have the resources and the manpower and, of course, the University of Alaska to back them up on it. Okay. Uh That uh, the borough employees are, are overpaid at, at all. I think they uh, uh, are they, they receive a fair wage and 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 benefits for the work that they do. And uh, uh, if you compare uh, their wages with uh, with other public employees in the state, as well as the private sector, uh, I don't think they're overpaid at all. Okay, Michael Dukes. I think as far as wages go, uh, the. Uh, the public employees are uh, aptly compensated in the in the wages portion of it. Where my concern comes in is in the benefits. When you have the average benefit package uh, costing 70% of a wage, meaning if it's a $50,000 position, then you know you you you've basically got uh, a, almost 70% 69.2% of that is going back into benefits. That's concerning because there is just not commiserate with the private sector. Um, the average salary is good. I think that, that 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 tracks well. But I am concerned a little bit with the benefits packages, something as Mr. Blanchard said, I think we need to keep an eye on, as it is the public's money that's being spent. And uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll look to that in the future. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I think I have to kind of agree with Joe. I don't know that the uh, that the education budget is out of control, but I do know that basically the the assembly, uh, you know, makes its contribution in the, or makes the decision as to the level of local contribution. But uh, it's the school board that's going to decide how those funds are expended. Okay, Michael Dukes. Um, we uh, we hold the purse strings. Uh, ultimately, we don't have you know line by line item control. That's not something, as Joe said, that that is in the purview of the borough. We do control the purse spring, so if we feel that there's something uh, blatantly wrong, then we have that opportunity at that point. We could reduce the amount of budget. Um, as far as do I think it's too much, um, I'm concerned. You know, $16,000 for every student is being spent right now. Uh, we have serious, uh, you know, challenges over the last few years. It's gotten a little better with uh, graduation rates and dropout rates and some of these other things. Uh, but we don't have any direct control on that. Um, we have done things, and not myself. In fact, before I uh, got on the assembly, there were some things where they took some funds to lapse back to make sure that maintenance was performed, and some things that the assembly has done that has kind of made sure that there is some accountability in uh, in the way things proceed in those in those ways. And I think that that's been effective. And uh, so we'd look for any anything like that that could be done in the future. We would again look at that, and I, and I would think that would support that. I am. I think libraries are are one of the most important resources of any community. Uh, I, I've seen the pictures. I know how small the North Pole Library is, and how uh, how much how much utilization there is, and and how popular its children's programs are. And so, no, I would definitely uh, be in favor of of constructing a, a new and larger library for North Pole. Uh, also, you know, uh, you know, it's it's obvious that Norween Library is is a, is a great facility, and, and it, if we're going to keep it that way, uh, you know, we need to replace the roof. And and Esther is a is a vibrant community that uh, uh, I think it, you know deserves to have a a, a, a library. Okay, Michael, Dukes. Uh, I'm undecided at this point about the North Pole Library. My children go there every summer uh, every summer for the summer reading program. The facility is small, there's no doubt about it. Um, I did give personally to the library fund, but I'm concerned about expending $13 million to create uh, a new building uh, for that. So I'm still examining that. As far as the repair or maintenance of Noel Ween, it, it needs to be done. Um, I've often said that there's a special place in hell for the guy who thought of deferred maintenance. I think that that's a crime that we've let it get to the point that it got and that we now are in a crisis mode to try and fix it. I think it should have been taken care of along the line, and, 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 I, and I would really like to see that going, move, uh, going forward. I'd really like to see that happen. 
Esther, uh, I'm concerned about the population base there supporting a library. Um, you know, when you have a, a city with, with 15 or 1600 residents, uh, I see that as one option, uh, but we have a community out there. It's a, it's a tight community, but I don't know if it's necessarily full-size town status yet. So again, I'm still deciding on those issues, but uh, I think uh, North Pole and Esther are kind of problematic, but repairing the Nolween Library, I definitely support. Okay, Mr. Davies. Well, overall, I think libraries are among the most important. I too would like to thank KJMP for putting on this forum. Uh, what I observed soon after moving to Fairbanks is that what makes this community special is, is the way people look out for each other. And, and local government is a way for this community to act in an organized way to look out for each other. And I, I think I have the open mind and the experience to, um, to, to build, help build a consensus and to make, um, make our, our form decisions and, make, and, and formulate solutions that this community has. And, and for that reason, uh, I would like to serve and ask for your vote. Okay, thank you very much. Michael Dukes. Thank you, Dick. Um, I'm a third generation Alaska, as I said, my kids are, are here, and I expect that my kids' kids will be born here and, and be raised here, so it's very near and dear to me, the heart and soul and the health of this community overall and into the future. Um, as I said before, um, I believe government's necessary, but I believe the smallest government possible is the best government and the most responsive. I believe that individuals should be responsible for taking care of themselves, for the most part, unless it's something like infrastructure or roads, things that couldn't be paid for by the individual that collectively we can help out with. I think that's a good idea. But again, I think it comes back to that rugged individual spirit of being Alaskan. That's what it means to me, to live here in the interior. And uh, if you believe those same things, then I would ask for your vote uh, on October the 4th. And I'll give you three more years of uh, you know doing my best to build a great community and, and keep us where we need to be. My name is Michael Dukes, and uh, you can find me at dukesforassembly.com. And thank you to KJP for this forum. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you, gentlemen.